motorcycle missions bike build here in SoCal with the Dofa Winery and the Veteran Sisters. Well, the How to Wrench Shop just finished up the engine portion of this build, and as you can see from the before and after pictures, uh, these veterans did a fantastic job. It was such a blast to you know, teach them and pass them on some skill sets, and it was pretty crazy to watch them split the cases and pull the transmission crank out when someone had never picked up a wrench before. So we want to give a special shout out to these. We just had some fun putting this all together. I please, I would like to encourage you to please put a comment below, encourage them to continue on in their therapy for PTSD. And uh, you know, all that these uh, organizations do to really support these veterans. We can't wait to get this back over to the Dofa Winery so that Motorcycle Missions can actually uh, finish building this bike with them, teach them even some more skill sets. But let's just let the photos and the videos do the job of telling the story of what we did here at How to Wrench. And hit the brakes. Sometimes I hate seeing myself on video. I have no idea if I'm teaching them how to dance, kung fu lessons, how to hide, but all of them are intently looking. Even Shadow is. Check him out. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. We had some real special guests stop into the shop. Uh, we had Jonathan himself from Vapor Honing Technologies, the man behind the machine uh, that you see us use in a, in a ton of our videos and our work and our training. And so uh, he came out to teach me some tips and tricks and I got a chance to work with the girls directly. If you haven't seen some of those uh, Instagram and fun videos where he's vapor blasting his hand, you gotta check that stuff out. But uh, uh, also, if you haven't seen what this machine will do, check this out. The girls had an absolute blast uh, using it and uh, man, what a tool. Next up we had Derek from a company called Detail Works and he was representing McGuire's and uh, is a, a detail and finish expert and uh, partnered up with uh, McGuire's and they are actually going to do a special class for the Veteran Sisters Motorcycle Missions group to actually uh, detail the bike right before it goes to the Long Beach show. So you got to stay tuned for that. Thanks a lot for coming to the class, Derek. Hey, you have to ask yourself, how does any of this happen in the first place? Well, this really comes down to motorcycle missions. If you haven't done it yet, get over to the website that Crystal has and start to check into her work and hear her story. She could tell it a thousand times better than I could possibly could to try and uh, talk about the heartache that got her involved with veterans and PTSD and what that was like. I've really connected with this organization on a lot of levels, but it was fantastic working with the Veteran Sisters and, and uh, you know, being part of their therapy and recovery and, and just having a blast doing it. So one last thing I want to say is that all this stuff happens because of your donations and because of your help. So please take the time to uh, share, support, like, uh, you know, connect people that you know need this help or that could also financially help these companies. I know what it's like all too well to buy every camera and part and tool in the uh, event that you're trying to help other people. So, all right, friends, here are the final pictures of the assembled motor for the 1972 CL350 Honda for the SoCal build here at Motorcycle Missions. We had a blast doing this. This is pretty cool. Enjoy and stay tuned for a special message at the end of this.
Hey friends, I really wanted to put a little personal authentic story at the end of this to kind of tell you, you know, how I got connected with this. Uh, I got asked at work the other day, they said, hey, you know, why are you connected vets being how you weren't in the military? And I thought, you know, fair enough question. You see a lot of that where people are rah-rah, which is fine, but I, I really am authentically connected to this because I've struggled with PTSD uh, quite a bit of my own life. Uh, Obviously, it's different how you get it. There's so many different forms of mental illness and struggles and whatnot. But uh, the big thing about my story is that when I was uh, I was uh, 19, my 17 year old brother took his life, and what a just absolute heartbreak. And my connection so much to PTSD survivors with vets and whatnot is I tried to go in the military. I really wanted to, and this might surprise people as well. But um, I was a high school dropout, and Back in the 90s, when I tried to join the military, they wouldn't take you. They wouldn't take a GD unless numbers were really low. There are no wars going on, so numbers were high. And uh, I literally watched all my friends, you know, leave high school and go on. And and uh, I carried a lot of shame with that for a long time. It's really how I got into motorcycles. Ironically, I looked around. What am I going to do? Well, I'm a gearhead. I can turn some wrenches. I'm I'm totally proud of my story. Don't get me wrong. I mean, but. At the time when you go through it, it's not so great, right? So carried a lot of uh, brokenness from my brother into college, a lot of shame from life, a lot of family baggage and drama, and uh, became a survivor myself of all that. That's something I, I really connect to with uh, veterans when I talk to them is, you know, how do you survive this? And the first thing is just getting real with the fact that you, you're in need. And so if anybody's watching this where you're feeling like, man, I really need help, uh, man, please get a hold of these organizations. They are there for you. That's why they do this. You know, like I said before, Crystal has quite a traumatic story and how she got connected and why she's chosen to do a life of service and give back. Uh, it's just, it's it's out of this world meeting these people and, and seeing so many things in common about being a survivor. Uh, the other thing is, is that maybe if you know someone that needs help, you know, direct them, like, share, subscribe, you know, that's what we do. We try to, you know, just pass on good information and help each other out. So share those websites, share uh, uh, the ways to get connected with uh, with these, you know, groups so that your friends can get help or a family member. And I, I think that's something that people really forget about is... Whenever there's a suicide, you know, in, in my personal story, you know, my mom and I in particular, and I mean, aunts, uncles, you know, friends, everybody, but there's all these survivors and we have to figure out and try to cope with this. I just grabbed a report off the internet off one of the government sites here, just kind of out of curiosity, like, what does this really look like? And you got to remember, this is just reported. A lot of stuff goes under the radar and just happens or, you know, people don't have family or whatever. So, I mean, this number is really low. But last year, 2018, there was 325 people that took their life in the military from PTSD and that went up from 285 in 2017. That's scary. It's just absolutely scary to think that there's that much brokenness and that much hurt because you know when I read those stories, I'm trying not to get choked up right now, but when I read those stories or reports, I immediately uh, selfishly get angry at the person for doing it and I, and I and it's it's not fair. I mean it's a mental illness, it's a disease, and uh, you need treatment, you need help. But the other thing that I really relate to are the survivors. All of those people, I think there was a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, a husband, a wife, a best friend, um, pets, God, geez, everything, right? So it's, it's a lot of brokenness, and I can't help but say, you know, high five and hell yeah to the companies and people out there that are doing something to make a difference. So that's why I got connected. I hope that you found this uh, not only uh, fun and, and playful and useful, but it's for a really, really serious cause. And I hope that you reach out, get connected however you can, or help those in need there around you. If man, you see somebody, I don't care if they're military or not, and they're struggling, man, hold a hand out, please. Nobody wants to, uh, you know, wish they would have done something more because all of us that are surviving someone that's committed suicide in our life, believe me, every single day, we wish we would have did more. We it's it's just a fact of being a survivor. You go on, you figure out the best way to live your life, but it's it is broken beyond measure. So that's it. I'm gonna get uh get out of here. I hope, like I said, uh, that this uh, somehow impacted you. It's been a long time since I did any motivational stuff. Back when I was teaching at the college, I had the opportunity to kind of have the the stage a lot. So. Uh, 
man, just uh, go out there and continue to be awesome. Uh, as always, you know, we say around here, keep wrenching, but I'm going to end this one with uh, keep being awesome, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Hey, what are you doing? Have you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell? You're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up.